Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with The Private Room. And tonight we have a special series that I have invited a few friends and advocates to come on tonight and share what it is that they're doing in the community and for them to share with you and myself what their why is. So I right now am in the middle of about to pop publish my second book, Earn Your Wings, A 30-Day Journey from Survivor to Advocate. And in there, I talk about my why. And so I've invited some friends to talk about their why as well as I start promoting my book, but then also to really raise awareness around different forms of advocacy, different causes, and the reason why people are giving back to their community, especially now. Everybody's back out in the community with COVID, um, and we're not scared to go out anymore, or at least I'm not. Everybody is opening up. They're having events. We just got through October domestic violence Awareness Month and was able to get out and really connect and hug on our friends. And so I invited some um, ladies here with us. I have a supposed to be on with us tonight, but at the last minute he couldn't make it. So with us a couple of weeks to express his why with us. So we're going to go in because we have some phenomenal women today share with you. It looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six of us on tonight, including my, myself. Um, we might have one or two jump on trying to get active ahead and get started. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to briefly, um, this, well, sorry, we're going to briefly introduce one another tonight and talk talk about the different um, organizations that are represented tonight. And then we're going to talk about the why. Why is it that we are out in the community helping others? Why we are commissioned and why we have a passion and dedication to helping others in our community. So there are different causes on tonight. There are different purposes on tonight. And so if you are working in the community, if you are a community leader, a community advocate, please join us tonight so that you can chime in and express what your why is. But then also, if you are looking for opportunities to get involved in your community, especially with the holiday season coming up, then tonight you are going to have perfect examples of ways for you to get involved and even how you can get involved with the ladies that we have on our panel tonight. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to go in order of what I can see. Not sure if you guys are seeing the same order, but we're going to go in the order that I can see on the screen right now. And so we're going to get started with Miss Andrea. Miss Andrea, please introduce yourself to us. Tell us who you are and what your organization is for everybody to hear. So thank you, Tiffany, and great to be here in the private room with all of you guys. I see some new friends, some old friends. So I am Andrea Merriman, and I am a creative harmony coach and master domestic violence help coach. And what I do is I help leaders create harmony in their life. Everybody's looking for balance, work-life balance. And so I help them create what I say is harmony understanding that it might not look like everybody else's and also teaching um, trauma-focused skills to leaders so that they can recognize domestic violence and know how to respond safely. So that's who I am, Tiffany, thanks. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Um, Miss Andrea has definitely been a great mentor to me. Um, she was helping me through a little that I had about a year and a half ago. Um, and she really helped me to kind of um, look in the mirror and see what it is that, um, you know, sometimes when we look in the mirror, we don't see the same things that other people will see. And um, we had a very candid, open talk, a very loving talk from Miss Andrea um, to help me really focus and to center myself because at that time, um, that's what I needed. So I'm so grateful for you, Miss Andrea, and being that guide for other people um, out in the community as well as other advocates. So I really appreciate you taking the time tonight to be on with us. Next, Miss Nicolian, who I have not seen in about two years now. 
Oh, I'm so excited to have you on tonight. Tell us about you. How you doing? I'm um, I have been for three and a half years. I stepped back and just said it was time for me to heal because the last speaking engagement I was at, I, mm -hmm. I got tired of seeing um, women hug each other. It was like pain, comfort, and pain, and we call it a healing. And right then and there, I said, okay, I have to really do some real, real deep healing. And, and that's what I have done. And so, yes, I've been released to, I can speak again now. And um, a part of my organization is Humanity Without Colors, as well as Mothers Against Domestic Violence. Um, when I moved to Atlanta, um, I really went in to see the conditions of the people and what their major concerns are. So I said, you know what? I want to revamp things and do things completely different. I don't want to just send resources that I haven't trained myself. I didn't want to send them to therapy with, with a therapist that, and, you know, a couple of people said they end up worse. They didn't like their therapist. So I said, okay, we need to do this different from, from my point of view and hearing from the other women as well as men. And for me, the main thing is not just, you know, um, catering and, and helping the, the survivors, but also getting the help for the abusers. So if you don't help the abusers, what they do, they go on to abuse someone else. So that's my main mission, to also help the abusers get the therapy, the rehabilitation that they need. Yes, yes. That's, um, that's, that's really hard to do for, and I, I know for me, that would be really hard for me to do, um, to work with the abusers. But I know that that is something that is definitely needed. Um, people mm -hmm. say that, um, users can't change, but I believe anybody that wants to change can change. So um, that's really good that you um, have that desire to be able to help abusers, to help them to be able to understand why they are mm -hmm. abusers or what um, might be the root of their abusive behavior. Um, and so I really appreciate you doing that. That's just a special kind of advocate to do because I know me. I, I probably could not, but I do understand that they need help too. Um, Absolutely. Because we can't, we can't stop domestic violence. You can't reduce domestic violence if you don't help the abusers too. So um, right. I'm, I'm really glad that you're doing that. I'm really glad that you're doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Laura, Miss Laura, she's a, my new friend. Hi there. How are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you guys? Everybody looks Doing great, great tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and Tiffany, I really appreciate you um, having me on. Um, and I'm just so honored to be amongst such uh, powerful women. So I'm really excited to be here. Um, my name is Laura Mosley, and I am a survivor of over 23 years of domestic violence. Um, I became, I got out of my situation in 2017. I'm a single mom of three kids. I now have a grandchild also, whom all live with me. So, um, <laughs> so full house, but you know, it's, it's great to have a house where um, I'm not afraid to come home to it at night and it's safe and, and, and a safe haven. But um, I work for a federal social services organization that shall not be named, but I get to help people that way. And I also try and help people through my blog. It's called the DV Walking Wounded, DV standing for domestic violence, because I know walking wounded a lot of times uh, refers to um, our veterans. So I didn't want anybody to mistake that. But I think when I was in active abuse, I would get away from my abuser and ultimately go back because I think the unknown is scary. And I think that people don't, um, I think, victims of abuse don't, they know what the abuse entails, that they know. It's the unknown that's scary. And I, my blog shows that, you know, you can survive on this side of, of you know, getting out of abuse. And, you know, you can, I still struggle, but I, you know, I blog about it. I blog about resources. I blog about all kinds of things. So people that are actively going through it or are surviving it, or even their, their family and friends can read it and, and, and be, you know, driven to help or, uh, you know, seek help as needed. So, 
So that is my organization. I'm also a community activist and um, trying to get a law passed in Indiana to protect victims and keep abusers uh, locked up longer. And that's kind of at a standstill right now, but that's okay. I'm still fighting. Good, good. We definitely need to change some of these laws because um, I know just you know personally um, working with different victims and them having to go to court and go through the, the, the justice system and so forth that the, the victims end up being re-victimized um, going through the court system and going through, you know, the, the different systems be able to make sure that they're safe and make sure their children are safe and, you know, custody. And it can just be a horrible, horrible experience um, for victims um, and their families as well, especially when there are children involved. So um, let us know how we can help you, even though we're in a different state, but let us know how we can help you because voices from all over can definitely be um, impact change. So um, thank you so much for Keeping up the good fight. <laughs> Miss Alicia. Hi, Miss Alicia. Hello, everyone. So I am also called Coach Lee, and I am a self-love master trainer that uses a holistic approach. And what that means is since I'm all about na nature, natural herbs and using things in that way with meditation and I assist overcomers of domestic violence with regaining their true identity and learning how to love themselves again and also while I do that I also be in the community with going to different organizations nonprofit organizations and doing coaching sessions group coaching sessions individual sessions and in the school systems as well and also now I'm learning that my mission is to not only because I was living in North Carolina Charlotte North Carolina but it's not only for me to just stop there I was in Maryland for a few months and now I'm currently in Louisiana so I know that it's for my mission to spread along internationally globally and what I'm called to do and also with that, I've created a loving me self love oil, which helps enhances enhances that love you have within yourself, make you feel vibrant, make you just feel like so central. And as a as a woman, and being remembering that part of you that got took from you from being in that abusive situation because with that type of environment, that type of situation, you're losing so many parts of who you was and is learning how to become a whole new version of you not picking up from where you left off but becoming a whole new version of you healing through that trauma and not only am i assisting them with their healing it's basically going backwards to some wound to some areas in your life from childhood that assisted you with attracting those type of relationships because i've learned through my process of healing that it was trauma in my past life when I was younger that I dealt did not deal with or properly heal from that caused me to attract those type of relationships. So as I'm assisting these individuals that overcame domestic violence is I let them know we have to go backwards in order to go forward. And when I say backwards is going back into that space where the initial trauma began and healing and nurturing it and loving it. So that when you come to where you're at currently, you are coming as a whole individual, not looking for your other half to complete you because you're already whole, you're already loving all over you, you're already being kind and nice and stuff, so that you are attracting healthy, true, true healthy relationships. Okay. Me in a nutshell. Yes, yes, that, that is all great things. Um, I really liked how you said, um, about loving on yourself and, you know, giving yourself what you need and, you know, helping you feel sensual and all those kind of things. Because a lot of times we lose ourselves when we're in um, domestic violence relationships, um, unhealthy relationships, um, and we, we do lose ourselves. I know I've gone through that. I'm sure many of you have gone through, you know, relationships where you just 
felt like you lost a lot of yourself. And so um, I think that's a beautiful thing to be able to reconnect with your beauty and your 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 feminine self and you know your sensuality and all that kind of stuff. I think that that is just a beautiful um, transformation for someone who is coming out of um, an abusive relationship to be able to fall in love with themselves again and just really feel like a, a woman or a man again, but feeling whole. Um, Cause that can be really hard to do. So I like that. I like that. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you for so much for sharing. And uh, I keep saying every time you bring up them oils, I'm going to tell everybody on here, if you have not tried her oils, you need to try her oils because she has, is it the, which one was the one I have, Alicia? The Love of Me, the one I just showed, the Love of Me oil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, yes. That that Love Me oil is, is it smells good. It feels good. It's silky and it just makes you feel all romantic and all that stuff. So <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. If you have not experienced it, I'm encouraging you to experience it because um, it just makes you feel really good. And knowing the purpose of it, I think just real. Thank you so much, Miss Alicia, for having that for, for everybody, not just the ladies. Miss Johnne, Johnne, hi, how are you gorgeous? Hey, hey, can y'all hear me good? Yes, we can hear you. you. Hear me good? Okay, good. Awesome. Hi, I'm Janae the Goddess. I am yep. here. I'm so excited. Thank you for bringing me and inviting me once again. Um, it's a pleasure uh, being able to share my experience. I'm a recording artist. I'm from Miami, Florida. I now live in Charlotte, North Carolina. I also model. Um, I am CEO and businesswoman of, of Rock Guys Entertainment. Um, and um, I'm also an advocate within the LGBT community and women's rights, you know, mental health advocate. And I just love sp spreading the love everywhere. Yes, yes. Um, I had the pleasure of finally meeting you on Tuesday. As um, soon as I saw your gorgeous face, um, you just lit up the whole place. They call me sunshine, but you were sunshine too the other night because you just lit up the whole place. <laughs> That's what I do. Um, thank you so much for coming out. Yes, and you did, and you did. Um, she has those Megan knees. She had the Megan knees dancing on the dance floor. So thank you so much. <laughs> no, I got Maxwell. I got Maxwell ankles, honey. <laughs> oh yes, I was about to say that. I was about to say that. I don't know if it's Megan anymore. It might be Maxwell. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Yes, for representing the LGBT community. Um, and I really, really appreciate that. Um, I know that the LGBT community has its own um, issues, has its own concerns, um, and we, we have to be able to uh, share with the community and understand uh, your community and to really, really support people. Um, there's so much hatred in the world uh, these days. And so um, having someone that is advocating for the LGBT community and helping those who might not understand or be ignorant of it, um, I think is definitely needed because I'm sure she'll share your experience later. Um, there's there's so much trauma, there's so much abuse, and there's so much violence um, just in the world today, but even more in your community that we don't hear about. So thank you so much for being an advocate in the LGBTQ Absolutely. community. We appreciate you. Yes. Yeah, Miss Trey, Miss Trey J, how are you? Hi, I'm well. How y'all doing tonight? I know I'm all in the dark. We are well. <laughs> well. It's okay. It's okay. You can you hear me though? Tell us can about you. you. Me? Yes, we can hear you. Tell us about you uh -huh. and what your business is. Okay. Well. I'm Trey J, and I am the lead singer of Just Fine, the Mary J. Blige tribute band, as well as the CEO of Trey King Soul School Band. I am a testimonial speaker for domestic violence. I am also in school right now. I used to teach at an all boys school um, for troubled youth and rehabilitation in New York for 10 years. 
and I am now back in school trying to finish up my degree for social science just in case I need to go back in the field. So I just want to have something else to fall back on because I am getting older and I won't be singing much, much longer. <laughs> but So I have to find something else to be um, talking about. But as I said, I am a testimonial speaker. Um, I was in an abusive marriage for several years. And, um, and I, I found out some things. And the main, what I found out is um, sometimes it has to do with culture. My husband was not American. He was West Indian, Jamaican, or whatever, Cuban. And their views are different. And um, they think, I went to Jamaica, and they don't mind if your husband fights you. They're not going to break that up. Um, so it's just about how people are raised, and sometimes how people are raised, and, what their, and how their culture is that determines how they act towards women. Um, I can say I can speak to him now because we did have a son who's before, but I am able to speak with him without being hostile or having any type of hatred. But that only comes because I'm healed. If I was still hurt by that, I wouldn't be able to do that. But I'm fine and I'm living my life like it's golden. Hey. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on with us tonight, even though you're driving. So I appreciate that. I really do. And last but not least, Miss Misty, how are you? Nice to I'm finally good. meet you. I'm good. Can you hear me? Okay. So I don't have earbuds to go to my Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Okay, great, great. So I work for a large organization um, in Alabama that I cannot talk about on this on this live stream. Um, so I'm a case manager and advocate um, for domestic violence services um, full time. Um, that's what I do for a living. Um, I am a podcaster of I'm a Survivor podcast, and I started my podcast in 2019 um, solely for the benefit for me to tell my story. Um, because I am a survivor of domestic violence. And so it changed, it, it, the, the role sort of kind of like changed within that podcast realm of let me tell my story, but no, let me give every other woman this platform to share their stories. Um, your voice is so powerful and it changes other people's world sometimes. Just, you know, you never know who you are reaching with your voice so I always said, you know, I'm a voice for the voiceless. And then, you know, everyone kind of came together. I started becoming, um, started getting guests in that um, sense. And, and it just became this huge thing. And so now the podcast has a life of its own and I enjoy um, doing it. Um, I had to kind of cut down my time because I am a full-time advocate. Um, but I enjoy what I do. Um, and I love to advocate. This is what my passion is, and it's my purpose and my soul. And I'll probably be doing it until the good Lord says no more. You know, I'm going to call you home. So that's about all, all I can say about myself. So. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're a full-time domestic violence advocate. Um, that is amazing. I know that probably takes a lot of... Um, you know, mental and emotional uh, toll on you because we all know being an advocate can be very stressful, but it can also be very um, rewarding and it can be something that um, you can grow into and doing it full time. I, I totally, totally admire you for that. Um, I wish I could do it full time myself. Um, so thank you so much because there's not, I've met a lot of domestic violence advocates that work in domestic violence organizations, but they are not domestic violence survivors. <laughs> and so you being a survivor and being a domestic violence advocate, that makes a big difference, a very big difference. So thank you so much for your dedication. That is amazing. That is amazing. Very good. So we have a, a great panel here tonight. We have a really, really great panel here tonight. So what we're going to talk about now is what is your why? So we know what your businesses are and we know, you know, about your organizations, but 
let's talk about your why. Why is it that you are an advocate? And even though the assumption is, you know, like Misty, you're a domestic violence advocate, or Nicolian, you're a domestic, you're a, an advocate for mothers against domestic violence. But tell us the why. Why why you're an advocate? You became an advocate, and anybody anybody can speak. <laughs> okay, um, I would say for me, I became an advocate because I'm also a survivor, and um, I felt like it's more than just surviving. Um, we have to get to a place where we do not just stop at the surviving part, and we have to reach back. And that's one of the main reasons why I decided to also help the abusers. And I get it. People um, look at it like, why would you help the abusers? Because nine times out of 10, the abusers I spoke to, they was abused themselves. And just like the young lady um, that said she had from uh, Jamaica, um, I, I get it. I absolutely understand it. I get it. Um, Nine times out of 10, most of our first abusers started in the home with our parents. If we are really willing to be transparent and honest. So when we have um, situations where we grew up seeing violence, um, we didn't learn how to communicate, um, you know, properly. And the only response was beating or hitting. You have to understand that. Um, I'm going to be as transparent as this. I have been on both sides of the fence. I have been the abuser and I also have been abused. And for many years, I didn't realize I was abused. I was But the fact that I had to fight goes to show that, you know, there was a problem. I didn't know how to handle my emotions. Um, so this is one of the reasons why I became a advocate because if we don't talk about these things if we don't address the real issue if we don't address the trauma that really came from our parents to be honest if, uh, for in many cases um and things of that nature um if you notice we always talk about spare the rods for the child beat 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 and no that's not the answer you know nine times out of ten um in all of our community the reason if you know we are we go to hitting first is because we was taught as a child that beating is a form of correction and that's not the case. And until we deal with those issues, until we talk about it, until we advocate, we can't we gotta stop throwing each other away. So no, I can't throw the abuse the abuser away because guess what? When someone did something very cruel to me and I felt like it was betrayal, I hit him first or I smacked him in the face or you know, and, and no, it's not acceptable. So I know if I can change, then yes, I have to give that back to someone. I have to reach back. Yes, to yes, yes, yes. Yes, I I really appreciate that. Um, and can you tell us briefly why Mothers Against Domestic Violence? Um, because um, I had a situation with my son and his mother um his daughter's mother um that ended very it was it was really really bad um that my son was even on life support um and let me explain something because we are over that i i love his, his uh daughter's mother i call her my daughter too um i understand i understand it um i also feel like i'm i take part of the blame as well. I take accountability because of what my son so you know, watching me go through what he also experienced, you know, from me just you know, I, I was a young mom and dealing with trauma of being in an abusive um family that all that's all we knew is fighting. Um not only that we um we just experienced a lot of trauma as kids, molested, you know, I was molested at a young age, and what it made them. So I feel like because I did not get therapy at a young age, I did not get counseling, nothing. Um, it was just, you're strong, get on and move on through it. And my son saw those things. So the fighting, that's how he learned to, to deal with conflict. 
not talking, not going to therapy, not, you know, using spirituality, none of that. It was always the fight. So yeah, um, that's one of the reasons, um, as well as having friends that mothers lost their, their child to domestic violence. So yes, I, I definitely had to um, start there because it's personal. It's not business to me, it's personal. And, and healing is a must, for real. The real yes. healing, not speaking it. I'm talking about the real healing. So yeah, it's, it's personal. Yes, 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 yes. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, I can't imagine um, having to um, watch my child in an abusive relationship and how I would respond um, as a mother. And so I know several um, parents as well who have lost their children um, to domestic violence um, as well. So uh, thank you for sharing that. That was um, very personal. So thank you for sharing that with us. I appreciate that. Um, who else would like to share their why? I'll go next because um, I want to add something about goes back the parents the household, and I grew up in a abusive household, so that's all I know. It becomes a behavior when you witness abuse, abuse, rather it's domestic violence or sexual assault. It's you feel as though it become it, well, not feel as though it really becomes a part of you if you're not properly healed through it. If you're not properly taught that that's not normal, you believe that that's normal because that's how your household was. This was my normal way of living because this is what I was brought up in. This is how I was living. I was used to seeing my mom being beat up and dragged and all of this by my dad. So once it got to the stage of me relationship if the relationship was like a healthy relationship i didn't feel comfortable in it once it was toxic i was like okay this <laughs> this one i'm used to. this is this comfortability to me and that's because i witnessed it that's because yes. i also yes. from being you you like you said getting hit getting um out the uh they felt as though punishment was putting their hands on us or you getting a beating and this beating and it's like you doing all of this, you become accustomed to the physical abuse. And it's like being I being so I become accustomed to it. And not only am I being accustomed to the physical abuse, I'm hearing the verbal and emotional abuse in the household as well. So I'm already hearing the name calling and all of this other stuff. So if you was excuse my friend calling me a bitch, it's like, oh, I ain't that bitch. No, you're not. <laughs> so it's right. like, hearing that is like wow so it had to really take for me to walk on my personal healing journey to know that I had to share my story because through my healing is how I learned to love myself and learn that the things that I experienced in my life was toxic it was not healthy and it caused me to be angry. It caused me to not love me. I didn't even know I didn't love myself until I learned to love myself. If y'all understand what I'm meaning. And it's like, it took all of that toxic stuff to get rid from me, ripped from me, cleaned from me, for me to know that I was carrying all that heavy weight on me for so many years that's why I kept attracting these type of relationships. Because I was not in just one abusive relationship. I was in many. And it's like, how you how you be in so many abusive relationships? Because I was wearing it on my body for them to come towards it. It was like a magnet for me, for me to have that. So it's so passion to me to assist others once they realize this is not the life I want to live. This is not who I want, what I want for. Once they're in that space of they're no longer in a relationship, I have a passion to assist them with loving themselves and healing through this process because I know how it felt for me when I learned to love me. I know how it felt when I learned to heal and I am I have a passion to assist them, assist others on their healing journey of loving them. 
because it's a beautiful thing and now you're attracting healthy relationships not only you're attracting healthy relationships you're opening doors to assist you in other areas of your life even with your finances because now you're no longer operating on a low vibration you're operating on a higher vibration so that's that's my why my why is my passion because of me being a, a, a overcome i say overcomer because i'm no longer surviving i overcame the surviving part i know how it is to survive because i survived it survive that relationship. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Next. So yes, that's my passion is my why. I like that. I like that. I like that. Can I steal that? That is I'm not some not surviving. <laughs> survive that. Yes. I like it. I like it. <laughs> uh, Miss Laura, you had up to, to talk next. Yes, ma'am. Um, I came from a large family of um, of Catholics, so divorce is just like a, a no no. So um, I had that looming in the background um, because I wanted the marriage that my parents had, um, you know, in love and 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 married and teamwork and all of it. Um, I have to say they were a great dynamic duo, but also. Um, when you know you, you just didn't you didn't rock the boat so you went to see the priest and i've had the church tell me i needed to pray harder be a better wife and go back to my husband which that's a death sentence you know in hindsight but and you know it's it's funny because <laughs> when you start questioning a priest i'm like well have you ever been married and he said no and i said have you ever been in a relationship yes and i said okay um, you know, but you've never been married. Nope. Well, it's hard to take advice from somebody that hasn't been there. Um, at least in, in, in one aspect or another. And then, yes. you know, so you, that's true. Well, you know, I, and not later on talking to my parents, they were like, you know, divorce isn't, you know, something that we wanted for you, but God does not allow a husband to, to abuse his wife like that. It's in the Bible, you know, the unevenly yoked. And I never thought about that. I just thought about keeping my marriage together for my children. And, you know, I, with this hope that he would get better and that's, you know, never happened. And, and then my advocacy for changing the laws, of course, once you get past all the questions of, Oh, what did you do to deserve that? And, Oh, why did you stay that long? The questions I shudder every time I hear, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, once you get past that, people are like, oh, well you survive, but what can you do? Right. Well, what can we do? We can change laws. But what prompted that was there was another lady in my community named Laura and her abuser, they couldn't hold him on much of anything. Mm -hmm. So they let him out and he left jail, hunted her down and killed her in my community. And that same judge was the judge over me and my abuser. So I really thought I was going to wow. fall in the same fate that she did. Thankfully to God, I did not. So I felt that's part of my why, because I was saved for something great. So, you know, if I have to yes. fight for this for years and years and years, I'm going to do that. So that's my why. Yes, that is a powerful. That was a powerful testimony. There's so many that have lost their lives. I know here in um, Mecklenburg County, every year I've attended um, a ceremony doing domestic violence. Might say the names of all of the uh, DV homicide victims um, from the previous year, and even though it's very melancholy, I guess you can say, you know, kind of a, uh, maybe some people might not be able to sit through that because unfortunately it's a long list, but hearing it, I think is just as powerful as knowing that all of these people have lost their lives, but we're still here. And as Alicia said, <laughs> we're not surviving because we're out of those relationships, but we are trying to help others 
to stay alive and to change the laws to help protect families and help to protect victims. Um, and just, I can't imagine how that felt, finding out that the other Laura in your community lost her life and you were under the same judge who let that person out. I can't, I, that, I can't imagine how that felt, but it's definitely, definitely a, a motivator. Right. And unfortunately, wife, he you know. he still practices. Wow. He's still judge. Um, but he did. He was a little harsher on my abuser. But then again, always let him out and things got worse. So, you know, there's there's a lot of work to be done. You know, we, we, I don't want anybody else to suffer that. Yeah. Fate. I'm pretty sure the other Laura wouldn't have either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I hate that she had to lose her life for him to become a little bit harsher, um, but hopefully that was a, a professional turn for him to understand the impact of, you know, letting abusers back out, um, you know, and giving them those very lenient um, every single day. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, would anybody else like to share their why? I will. Um, I believe my why, I realized that I had to have a why is when um, I realized that I was making my children keep secrets that um, was stressing them out. They were young I'm like, and they were stressed. And people don't think that children get stressed or or care that they're stressed until they stayed with my mother when I went away out of town and they had breakdowns and, and my mother called me and was like, what is going on? I never, like, you never said nothing. And that was the thing. I never said anything. I never said anything to anybody, but the kids were there. So they saw everything. And I'd be like, don't tell nobody. Don't tell. When you go to your grandmother's house, don't say nothing, you know, just, you know, and then they couldn't take it anymore. And my mother called me with everybody over at my grandmother at my mother's house crying about what the stories that the kids were telling them which was the truth but i just didn't i didn't think that it was bothering them like that so that's one reason but the other reason for doing this is because there are people like me who don't tell people or don't say anything embarrassment or people think that oh this is this can't be happening to you because you got too many good things going on or oh yeah she lying nobody ain't doing nothing to her because so and so whatever but that's that's a lie that's that's so untrue um i where some of you say that you were didn't feel loved or you weren't loving yourself or something like that it was kind of like the opposite for me i became the person who everybody, who, well, I was only really abused from my ex-husband, but it was for a very long time. So it wasn't like, it was for a very long time. And the thing is, I thought that I could change him. I thought that I could help him because he always would be sorry. So I said, I'm gonna stay. I'm not gonna be like everybody else. I'm not gonna call the cops. I'm not going, um, leave Ugh, i'm not gonna leave i'm gonna stay i'm gonna make sure you get through this because i know you're really sorry but he wasn't sorry this is something that he was used to i was the one that's being played and then when i realized that i was like no, i gotta be out but the thing is you, you have to you can't just leave you have to have a plan you have, you have to stay until you until you have a plan. I had to make a plan. It took me a while. But when I got that plan together, I was out. And then I could talk about it. And once I was able to talk about it to people, that's when the healing became. Um, that's when the healing process became. I never went to counseling or anything. I believe that me talking to people was my counseling. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just get what you got here. So that's that's where I am with with that. 
Um, and I am, I'm very happy now. Um, I'm not, I don't think that I attract abusers anymore or people that feel that, um, feel that they can abuse me because I'm so nice or I'm so understanding. Um, I, I think I'm in a healthy, more healthy relationship now since my ex-husband. But like I said, now we talk and he always calls, he calls me out of the blue every once in a while and be like, I'm sorry, um, I had a good person, yada, yada, yada. But he never tries to get back with me. He just say that he feels bad and he see things different. And I can understand that. And for some reason, I believe that because he had some way he's been Americanized. He's been here long enough to see that we don't, we don't really play that. A lot of us don't play that. And he's just learned that the cultures are different. And him being here, he see that what they were doing over there is just not right. I mean, they do it here too, but they did it there as the norm. Like it ain't no, it ain't nothing to do that. Everybody expects you to get beat up if you're in a, um, in a situation down there. They think that, oh, if you talk back, you know he's gonna slap you or you know he's gonna punch you in the face. You might even get your, um, your eye blacked or something like that. So, you know, that was something that they were used to. I wasn't used to nothing like that. And the first time that I did experience that with him, someone saw me in the mall and it was my brother's friend. And he called my mother, he called my brother and said, why your sister got a black eye? I ain't never had a black eye in my life. And, and my brother called me and I was just like, nah, I ran into something, I lied about it. But then that's when I kind of knew it was shit, I mean, stuff wasn't right. But hey, like the other young lady said, I'm, I am, I'm more than a survivor. I am, I'm good. I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I just need to let people know that you have to have a plan to get out. Can't just leave. You have to have a plan and you have to see it through. Y'all there? Tiffany, you're on mute. Huh? I, I see. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just okay. talking away. I don't um, know. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I I was on mute. Um, I was just saying that um, that's you made some really really good points about culture and how culture sometimes um looks different and how sometimes culture will determine what norm is and even if it is abuse abuse you know physically mentally emotionally some some cultures are accepting of husbands or or wives hitting or verbally abusing um their mates um i remember when i first became an advocate there was a young lady who was from india and she was here and um was very abusive very physically, emotionally, mentally, sexually, in every way. But that was their culture, where she was from. Um, and even her parents were like, well, that's your husband. And, you know, talk to her about, you know, her being submissive and so forth and so on. But she knew that in, in her, no matter what her culture was, it was not right for her to keep subjecting herself to being abused every day in her marriage. Um, but he used his title as husband as a way to control her. And that's something that in their culture um, was acceptable. And so it was it, it was very hurtful when, you know, she left him that her whole family turned against her because just like Miss Laura spoke of, you know, divorce not being um, acceptable in the the Catholic Church. It's not acceptable among that culture either. And um, she she went through a very hard time. And that was one of the first, one of the first victims that I, I ever helped. So it was a pretty tough for me too. Um, but just understanding the effects or understanding the differences, especially when it comes to different cultures and see that um, is interesting. Um, but 
I'm glad that he understands being here that that is not acceptable, no matter what culture you are from, that it's not acceptable to to, to hurt someone purposely or abuse someone um, that you claim to love. So um, that's very good point. Very good point. And kudos to your children for, for speaking up, um, because we always think that our children aren't listening and they're not seeing. And um, we and we realize, unfortunately, later when we see them in abusive relationships or they're blowing up in their relationships or something like that, how much they really did see and how much they really did hear. Um, would anyone else like to share their uh, their why? So let me share my why. Yes, ma'am, so, Miss Misty. Yeah. So, well, my why, <laughs> I was 17 um, years old when I met my abuser. And I got pregnant um, and he was a 24 year old male. And so I didn't even know what domestic violence meant. I had never heard that word. I didn't know what that meant. They didn't teach that to us in school. I'm from the South, I'm from Alabama. So I'm like kind of like Laura and you know, the Catholics in the South, you were taught when you marry someone, you stay married. So when I was 18, I had a baby by him and I got married and so um, you know, it, it we got to start with our kids. We got to educate the young men um, and, and young women um, about domestic violence. Um, I feel like that's where it starts um, with our youth. Um, and so, you know, I did do some some, you know, speaking to youth um, a few years back, um, did a man up movement th type thing. Um, I'm very dedicated to the families of um, women who have lost their lives. Um, I dedicate a lot of my time outside of my work. Um, and I'm dedicated to the work because not only am I a survivor, but I feel as if I'm dedicated because I have granddaughters. I have a daughter of my own. Um, and so my daughter went through um, abuse when I wasn't there by the hands of my abuser at when she was an infant. So I'm doing this to, you know, not for just me, but for the youth, for my daughter, for my grandchildren, because I do not want them to have to um, face what we have to face. But and at the same sense, if I would have had a me at 17, 18 years old, who had have held my hand in court, who had have been there every step of the way, then, you know, there's a lot of things that might have changed within that mm -hmm. time period because mm -hmm. coercive behavior was happening. And I didn't even know what that meant. I had never heard the word. Like I said, I never even knew what domestic violence was. So for me, education is the key. Even as an advocate, I try to educate um, the women that I help, that I see, and, and people in the public. You know, we have to educate the people in the public. This is still a taboo subject, basically. You know what I mean? Like, we're still fighting, and it's still an exhausting thing, but we cannot give up and stop, you know. And like you were saying um, about the visuals, you know, I did a candlelight visual. I was a part of two of those in October. I spoke names. So, you know, we do this every year. We have DVAM, you know, and and that's a busy time of the month. I mean, DVAM don't stop for me, you know, and I'm sure that doesn't stop for any other advocate that does this work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so the work is just in my heart. It's my purpose and it's my passion. Like I said, you know, in my intro, you know, I mean, I could probably talk all day long, you know, about different mm -hmm. things because I, you know, have trained so much, for so long, I feel like, uh, you know, but I mean, I don't know it all. And so I know advocates who've been doing this for 30 plus years, you know, um, you know, I know Miss Andrea, I know Miss Laura, uh, you know, that and the rest of you are new faces, but, um, you know, I, I thank y'all for having me and, you know, that's my why, I guess you could say in a, a little bit of a nutshell. I don't know if that was a nutshell, but that's my, why. <laughs> um, you know, like I said, I could yeah. just talking about it, but um, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Um, I, I 
I definitely um, understand what you're saying. I saw um, abuse in my home, um, mainly verbal abuse in my home, but I learned at a young age that, you know, someone cussing you out or someone calling you names, something like that, that that was, you know, I got, it was the norm for me once I started dating. And then I was like Alicia, when I had somebody good that was treating me good, I was like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> You know, so um, I agree with you. I agree with you. Starting starting um, at a young age, um, I know that Miss Alicia, um, she does a lot of mentoring, a lot of coaching with um, with yous. I do as well. Um, I'm sure all of us do, a shape or form. Um, so I definitely um, agree with you. I, and it's even harder when you have to advocate for your for your own children. I've had kids my daughter who was um, sexually assaulted about a year ago. Actually, it'll be a year in December. And um, it was hard. It was it was a tr triggering for me, but I also felt helpful. I grew it and I knew that I had the resources to be able to make sure that other people knew that I was there to protect her. And then she was empowered through just watching me, you know, and doing my speaking engagements and so forth and so on to advocate for herself. So um, definitely, definitely agree with you. We have to start with our youths. Um, we have to start with, um, because that's, that's where everything starts for our children, you know, our marriages, our relationships, um, every place starts at home. So if we're educating our youths now, then hopefully that means in 10, 15 years, we will have um, accomplished the reduction of domestic violence if we're working with our youths right now. Very good point. Thank you so much for sharing your why. Thank you. I'm so happy that I've met you. Thank you, Ms. Laura, for introducing me to Ms. Misty. <laughs> um, Ms. Um, uh, John A., do you wanna share your why? Or Ms. Andrea? Okay. Okay. Um, well, my why is, you know, I am an advocate within the LGBT community. Um, I represent the T, which is trans, transgender. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of violence happening in the world. And for a lot of you beautiful ladies have experienced a lot of domestic violence. Um, but outside of domestic violence, we just have violent behavior that is targeted uh, towards a, a, a minority group of, you know, uh, individuals, especially trans and also murdered, right? Um, so there was an incident where um, my former employer, um, I was dealing with some things with discrimination and it led to violence. And of course it wasn't domestic because this wasn't a lover's relationship. This was more civil. Um, and it led to a big thing in Charlotte, the FBI got involved, the state, the police mm -hmm. department, law enforcement. And it got really bad because uh, of course they didn't, know who they was messing with right and unfortunately within the lgbt community <laughs> we don't see justice with a lot of trans women black trans women of color to be exact the statistics are very high with murders every year um so um i'm glad to be alive today to uh be a, a survivor of violence and um, I use my voice and my platform. I have a talk show called Transparent, where me and some other beautiful ladies talk about the things that are happening within the community. Um, and uh, we have these uh, tough conversations because um, it is uh, it needs to be said and um, we don't have enough voices. And um, I believe that um, you know, everybody should be treated equally uh, around, you know, this, despite of sex, gender, race, whatever. Um, and I just fight for equality. And I believe that um, we all deserve a chance. So um, I, I just believe that we're getting to a place that we're becoming more inclusive. 
Um, and um, we're getting to a place where um, things are getting a little bit better because things are being more vocal than it were back then. You know, things were more taboo and, you know, not stuff being swept under the rug and not being broadcast on the news um, and, you know, just, you know, uh, not getting the right statistics for uh, the murders that have been happening within the trans community um, and, and especially our Black trans sisters. So, um, you know, I'm just an advocate and, you know, speaking out about it and, you know, uh, sharing that um, we all as women, we show up differently in the world. We're just different type of women, but we all share a space in womanhood and femalehood. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I first um, saw your story, it was in a group that we're both in and you were talking, it was not maybe a couple of weeks after your attack from your employer. And I just know, remember just watching your your videos and reading your, um, your post, how horrible and I felt that someone had targeted you and hurt you. Um, because you're a trans woman um, and this the hatred that we have in the world um, against people that you know choose to live their life the way they 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 want to live their lives that has nothing to do with with them personally but because of the hatred and because of the ignorance and because of the the prejudices that unfortunately we the, that we live in someone someone hurt you. And that, that really hurt me deep to my heart to read your post and to see that that had happened to you. So I'm very thankful that you are here to talk and that you um, are a voice for other trans women um, and other trans African-American women. And, you know, um, you are doing an amazing work and um, you are being heard. And I am really, really, really proud of you and what you are doing because it is very much needed, just like all of our advocates on here that are domestic violence advocates, being a, an advocate for the trans community is very, very important. And I'm just, I'm very honored that um, you have um, been able to be on our platform to openly talk about um, what happens with you. Um, we're actually having you on November 21st to talk more about, you know, your attack and what you went through and talk to other um, trans women in the community. So I'm really looking forward to that interview with you. So thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Miss Andrea, you're quiet tonight. <laughs> Tell us your why. <laughs> Yes, I was just listening to all these new people and just getting information. Um, and so my why started, why I do what I do now, started in 2014 when my 17-year-old daughter was <coughs> murdered by her brother-in-law. And that, when that happened to me, it was a new experience of understanding the depth of what's going on in our communities. You hear about it, you, you, you know, you see things like this more so now, but not so much. And you hear it on the news that someone was killed by a loved one. You hear it, but it doesn't, it rings a little different when it hits home. And so I started looking into really what was happening to our communities. And so my background is training and speaking that I've been doing for over <clears throat> a few years. So, <laughs> and so I created a program, the Jennifer Y. Merriman Health Program, which was named after Jennifer. And um, that program offers hope, empowerment, life skills, and prevention methods against domestic violence. So my main, I have, well, I don't know how many it is anymore, but my main reasons are one, I think that no other mother should have to bury her child because of domestic violence. No mother ever wants to bury a child, period, but definitely needlessly because of domestic violence. 
The other thing is I um, work with people because I think that we need to eradicate domestic violence. And to do that, we need to have conversations like this. We need to network together. We need to know what the other person is doing and support that person. And the third reason I started um, just really where I am now with this is because when I started telling my story, when I started into the domestic violence arena and sharing what I know and what I was finding out and speaking my truth, what I found out was I kept hearing a lot of people telling their story that had not gotten to the healing process of their journey. And so they were more or less, um, people say bleeding on the audience. I say they were leaving the audience um, traumatized. And the audience almost needed to get a therapist after they listened to all these people tell their stories. A little different than what we have here because everybody here has said, hey, this is my why, this is my reason, this is how I got past it, this is what you can do to heal. Oftentimes when you go to domestic violence events and you hear people talking, you don't hear that aspect. You hear, this is what happened to me. It was horrible. I need to tell you the gory details because we think that we can scare you straight. And I know that that's impossible to do. So my job is to teach advocates, leaders, community leaders, church leaders, how to understand what trauma-focused skills that they need. So they can not only tell their story if it's time for them to tell their story, they can identify domestic violence if it's happening in their communities, in their churches, in their, in their workplace, and that they know how to respond without asking stupid questions about why you don't leave, why you stay anyway, and why you put up with it. So my job is to make sure that that information is put out there so that everyone can um, have an opportunity to help someone and know what to do. And it's, I mean, I've been excited about it. We are going to, um, I now, my program is going global. Um, my job is to have it in all 50 states over the next five years. We're already covering seven states. So I'm excited about it and that's my why and what I do. Thanks for this platform. You're muted. Oh, okay. So very quickly, I'm going to tell y'all something since I keep doing it here too. So my job, we're, you know, a lot of us are doing virtual meetings and so forth and so on. So now they actually have a sign for Tiffany that says you're muted. So that's why I keep laughing because I need my sign because I'll start talking and I'm going on and on and they're like, Tiffany, you're muted. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, I'm very appreciative of everybody coming on tonight. Um, some new faces, some old faces, um, and just really sharing your why. Um, with I decided to run, earn your wings um, a few months ago because I felt that with October coming up and Domestic Violence Awareness Month and, you know, just hearing everyone and seeing everybody's, um, you know, events that were about to take place, I was also seeing what, what Miss Andrea saw. I was seeing a lot of people sharing their, their, their stories, but they weren't talking about the, being resilient and mental health and you know what it takes to pass the trauma and stuff like that i was hearing about all of the, the gory details of you know being a victim um it's really changing your your mindset from being a survivor um to a thriver and that's something that i just felt that i needed not just journey but also um journeys of others who helped me um become an advocate so Writing Earn Your Wings, A 30-Day Journey from Survivor to Advocate is really about what we talked about today. Finding your why, finding your passion. And it's not just for domestic violence um, victims or survivors. It's for anyone who's had any form of trauma to be able to become a voice for your, 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 your commission. Because I believe no one here just woke up one day and said, 
I want to be an advocate for domestic violence or I want to be an advocate for, you know, trans rights. No one, no one, no one woke up saying that. Everybody has a reason. Everybody has a why. Um, and I just think it's really important for us to share that, you know, not to just talk about our backgrounds and, you know, what brought us to this place, but to really tell people why it is that we we commit ourselves to doing it, because this is not an easy thing to do. We have things that are that are very disheartening and um, can be very humbling sometimes. But we don't do this. We don't do this for the money. We definitely don't do this for the money. We don't do this for the money. We don't do this for, you know, notoriety. We don't do this because, you know, we we just want to talk about ourselves and and, and be transparent and, and vulnerable at different, you know, being an advocate. That's that's not the reason why we do it. We do it because we are alive, like Miss Laura. We are alive to be able to advocate for others who might not be able to, like Miss Trey said, who might be holding it in, who might not be telling the truth about it. And um, tonight we had perfect examples of why we do what we do. And I'm just, I'm very happy that you guys share that, or you ladies <laughs> share that um, here on the private room with me, um, because it takes it takes special people to be able to um, give yourself to others and give yourself to your community, especially when you're sharing a piece of yourself. So, thank you so much for being on with us tonight. Um, what I would like to do real quickly is for everyone to tell how people can find you. Um, so, if we can go in order, Miss Ann. Andrea, can you tell everybody how to find you on social media or however you want people to find you? Yes, I can be found on social media, everything but Twitter under Harmony Coach Andrea. I just made it easy. Harmony Coach Andrea. Love it. Love it. Miss Nicolian, tell everybody how they can find you. Um, can I say one thing before um, I say that? Um, for the ones who said they want yeah, to change have, things, have I have to. to mm -hmm. Huh? I can't hear you. No, go ahead. We're listening. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, go ahead. We're listening. Stated, okay. For the two that stated <laughs> that they want to change um, laws, the thing is, I have studied a federal law and government for 22 years. Um, actually, I have. Uh, a judge and a prosecutor that I, I am currently for my client have them um, being charged in Indiana, actually, um, in uh, Lake County, Indiana. So um, I can definitely assist you with that because the, the thing is, these judges need to be held accountable when they violate people's constitutional rights. So if they didn't protect any of the victims, um, they need to be charged. Um, immediately. So um, I just wanted to share that with you. And also, um, you can reach me on Instagram and Facebook, Nicole and Jackson. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for adding that in there. Because I know um, when we, you and I sat down on the couch for the Speak Up and Inspire series, you let me know that you knew um, some prosecutors here in Charlotte, Mecklenburg County who were making um, a difference, who made a difference in your life, but then they continue to make a difference in the domestic violence um, community. So thank you for sharing that. Definitely. Thank you for sharing that. We appreciate you. Um, Ms. Trey, tell everybody how they can find you. At just find MJB tribute on everything. I also wanted to just say um, we all have different stories or different ways of doing things. But I, as everybody was talking, I kept on thinking about um, isolation when um, when people when when the um, abused are young, younger. Um, we need to watch how their boyfriends or girlfriends try to isolate them because that's when things start. That's when you start to notice that things aren't right. Cause I was just thinking like, I was young, I was like 25 or so, 24, 25, and I was in love or whatever. So I followed my husband, which was my boyfriend at the time to a whole nother country. 
and we lived in another country where I was by myself and that's where most of the abuse was. So I had nobody and no way to get to somebody for help. So I just always think isolation or when people try to isolate you, you definitely need to, you know, raise the eyebrow about that thing. But yes, you can find me at Just Fine MJB Tribute Band on all social media handles. Yes. Thank you for um, isolation definitely is um, a factor when you see abusive relationships that the abuser will try to isolate you from your family and your friends. Um, ninth grade and her boyfriend was very uh, controlling of her to the point was a that this young man was abusive and the young lady finally did break down that he hit her a couple of times and I, one of the one um, indicators for me listening to her that something was not right and even for her friends they knew that something wasn't right. So thank you for bringing that point out. That's that's really important, um, especially when um, we're we're trying to help others is being able to recognize the signs of um, abusive relationships. Um, Ms. John A, please share how we can find you. Hey, you can find me on www.janaetheegyptiangoddess.com where you can find uh, all my uh, other social media handles and um, get into my world and read my lovely uh, biography. Um, uh, Instagram is the real Janae Ryan, T H E R E A L J O H N A E W R I J S T. Facebook is Janae Wright. Twitter is I am Janae Wright. And I think that's all the social media uh, links. Uh, but Anytime you can always Google Janae Wright or Janae the Egyptian Goddess and I'll pop up. Yes, 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 yes. You have a very, very nice presence on, on social media. So it's not hard to <laughs> okay. find you. Um, so yes, and definitely check out Miss. Yes, you have a nice presence on social media. Um, and y'all check out uh, her music. She has some, some really nice music too. So. So check her out when y'all get it. Um, Miss Alicia, tell everyone how they can find you. So I am rebranding my business. So you can find me on Instagram and YouTube as Aligning with Coach Lee. And yeah, <laughs> Aligning with Coach Lee. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Short and sweet, but powerful. Got it. <laughs> um, Miss Laura, tell everybody how we can find you. My uh, my blog is called dvwalkingwounded.me. I picked the ME instead of .com because it happened to me. Um, I can be found on social media under mm -hmm. dvwalkingwounded on both Facebook and Instagram. And um, that's about it. Okay. Okay. Um, and Miss Misty, can you tell everyone how they can find you? Oh goodness, everywhere. Uh, so yeah. So you can find <laughs> I'm a Survivor podcast anywhere you can hear a podcast. Google it; it comes right on up. And it is on DomesticShelters.org. It is um, ranked two podcast in the nation on Feedspot. It is award-winning on DomesticShelters.org Purple Ribbon Award, Laura. And so, um, and Laura is a guest on the podcast, and she is a, an amazing blogger. And Andrea Merman is an amazing human being, an amazing speaker, <laughs> an amazing coach. And I guess, you know, I, I, I just like to empower other women because that's what we do, okay? We have to empower each other. Um, in this work because it's heavy, it's hard work, um, you know, and abuse is about power and control. Um, that's, that's where most abusers stand. That's, that's what they do. Okay. So, you know, all I can do as an advocate is stress, 
you know, if you talk to victims, safety planning and crisis line numbers that are available to shelters, um, you know, get people in, um, you know, in a safe situation um, before leaving, because we all know the first 24 hours of leaving is the most dangerous for a victim of domestic violence. It is. So, but you can find me on all social media, Misty, AKA, -A I can't say it, AKA Mista on Instagram. And that's on, I think, Twitter maybe. And then Misty Shavers is Facebook. And then you can do I'm a Survivor podcast on Facebook too. So that's me. Thanks, y'all. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. So we did perfect on time, everyone. I said about an hour and a half, and we are right there. Thank you, everyone, for, for um, listening to my listeners um, watching tonight. So thank you, everyone, for watching and hearing our advocates share their why. Um, Earn Your Wings, a 30-day journey from survivor to advocate will be out by the end of the month. Um, you can pre-order it right now on Amazon. You can find me at TiffanyLBrown.com. You can also find me on um, Facebook and Instagram as, as the Tiffany L. Brown. Um, and then also I um, wanted to let everyone know that as of uh, November 1st, um, BVP Project Safe Haven is open and taking referrals for emergency um, DV shelter for victims of domestic violence. So if you have victims who are looking for safe shelter, um, we will try our best to provide um, emergency shelter for victims that are trying to get away from their abusive relationships with a safety plan. That's the first thing that we do. Um, so if you have anyone who is in need, please feel free to reach out to us on our Facebook page, BVP Project Safe Haven. It does not have to be in North Carolina, um, anywhere. And what we are doing is trying to, um, we're doing, we're building partnerships with the different hotels to be, um, provide emergency shelter while we're helping victims find transitional or permanent homes. So just wanted to put that out there since it is November and um, I am, I'm grateful, very grateful for everybody for coming on tonight. So thank you and have a great night. And thank you for joining us again on The Private Room with Tiffany. Thank <laughs> you.